Welcome back to Doc's Hot Shop and Forge. Today we're going to continue with the treadle hammer build. As you'll recall from the last video, I welded the mounting plate to the anvil. Today we're going to grind off the surplus weld underneath, so it's got a flush plate to mount onto the mounting uh, uh, mount onto the base plate. And after that. We're going to get on with casting a couple of parts for the lathe to facilitate turning the pivot pins. Seeing as these are turned from 4140, anything that makes that easier is just a good thing. This casting will be a simple ZA12 alloy poured in a green sand mould. So, let's get things hot. Alright, so I'm going to grind these off so we've got a standing flat surface. So that's the base plate or the mounting plate well welded to the anvil and ground flat so it's ready for me to cut the actual base plate which is some 16 millimeter some 5 8 thick steel plate um, but that will be this weekend's job I think so that's this part essentially finished Got to work on the lathe a little bit so we can turn the mounting pins for the linkages for the hammer arm. So that's going to be the next major project. Next major component of this project will be those pins. So that's going to be a lot of turning. Um, I may shoot a little bit of that, but um, it's not the most exciting stuff. So. Right now I'm testing out my new green sand just to see how well it actually bonds um, and how well it holds inside the flask. If it holds up reasonably well then I'll be casting a part for my lathe so I can progress the treadle hammer as I have some significant amount of turning to do. my old moulding bench but unfortunately it has uh, been lost to the midst of time because well I haven't been doing green sand moulding in a long time so right now I'm ramming up what would be regarded as a false coat. A, this is to see if it'll stay in the flask. Um, but also how well it takes an impression because I'm going to in the um, so now well that's actually pretty good so that's good all right That test worked out pretty well. So let's fluff this sand up, ram up a false drag, and um, start. Oh, that actually took a bit of effort to get to come out. Excellent. Oh, 
All right, let's begin ramming up. But before we do, these are the parts I'm casting, so this will be attached to this. So once the pattern or the mold is made up, I drive this off and I'll install the pin. And this is a little guide plate. So that needs casting up. This is a actuator, so rotational force causes linear translation. Now we need this nice and flat because the flat sand surface will become our reference surface for the top half, which is going to have the actual mold, most of the molds actually in them. But we don't need it being super compact because we need to be able to push these items actually into the sand. Incidentally, this will be the first time this particular batch of sand is used, so... It might not be optimised yet, but green sand actually gets better with use as long as you keep tempering it with the right amount of water. Because all of this ramming that I'm doing actually drives the clay to be more tightly bound to the sand. My only concern is that this sand might be a touch fine for this particular alloy. Um, so I'll be venting rather generously just to give it the best chance. Beautiful. Talc is a good parting compound. It'll keep the sand from sticking to itself. It'll also keep the patterns from sticking to the sand. So what happened was, and I don't think I've got this on video, is that when I closed with the pin in place, I unfortunately got it just a little bit off center and it pushed out the cope. This time is put the pin I think we need to wet the sand a little bit. Oh, just a bit. Fiercely dry. Yeah, pretty good. Alright, let's try that again. Much better. Do the facing sand. about half full now. Really ram it into those keyways. Yep. Not terribly exciting this part. And now we vent. For those wondering, it's almost 40 degrees Celsius here at the moment and the humidity is in the 20% mark. This stuff dries so fast. Let's try this again. Mm. Not 
perfect. But, not terribly bad either. Right. Riser is in. Now if we do this right, that little bit there will stay in place. See if we've got luck on our side this time. And there we go. That is ready to cast. This is just to keep things from falling in and to minimise the water loss. wait for it to cool off and then we shake it out and have a look there is metal up the sprue so we do have enough metal in there um, that's just a matter of waiting to see if we've got enough head of pressure to actually get everything done that we wanted so yes finished casting Surface finish is not terrible. Um, it will take a little bit of tidying up. But that'll work. That surface is really good. Excellent. I'm very happy with that. That's going to be fantastic. Turn that hollow. I'll have to face off the inside of that. But we do have a lathe, so we can do that. So that's the grinding done. I'll be cutting the base plate to size in the near future. Um, being cut from a piece of 5 8 um, steel, it's going to take a little bit of cutting. I'll be cleaning the castings up over the next day or two and should be ready to start turning the pivot pins next week sometime. Um, in the next couple of days I will also be forging the 500 subscriber giveaway item. Um, seeing as we're like 10 subscribers away from hitting 500. So keep an eye out for that. That'll go live once we reach 500. So, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Feel free to share on social media. And if you haven't already subscribed, love it if you could subscribe. Um, hit the bell for notifications. We do run giveaways, as I've mentioned, um, and we are coming up on 500, so there's one in the very near future. So make time to get out to your shop. Have fun, but stay safe, and I'll catch you for the next one.